Welcome to Jack Fleming Artistry. I was recently commissioned to create a sign for a friend of mine's band. Their name is Southern Grit. They gave me a sketch that they wanted, kind of a rough idea, and then they gave me this uh, piece of paneling that I believe comes off of an electrical box and asked me if I could turn it into a sign for them to hang in their practice room. So that's what we're working on today. All right, as we get started here, I'm actually going to skip past the drawing portion of this for you guys and me transferring it. I've done quite a few videos on me transferring designs onto signs and other things that I've painted. Um, this is what this one looks like now. Already transferred, ready to paint. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, and approaching this, I've decided I'm going to start by painting this logo that's in the back here first. That way, whenever I go to paint my letters, if I've got any parts that kind of overlap into those, the letter color can overlap and end up crisping that up. I think that's going to be easier than painting my letters first and then this next. The vision that I have color-wise is taking this brown and just doing a little bit lighter version of it for the logo and then doing my lightest version um, of the color for the letters. I might even go with like a cream. I don't think I want to go with a white, but this back here will be some sort of tan. I have some tan to get started with. I've got some brown. Okay, I want to make something that makes this look subtle, makes the logo part look subtle. If I need to doctor it up, I've got a couple of other colors here. Imitation gold, gray, some black if I need to dull it down, and I've even got some white over here. But I think I'm going to start with the tan color and doctor it from there. You know, I really kind of like for my channel to be a little bit more of a show and tell kind of thing as opposed to instructional, but... Every now and then I see something come up in forums or in like Facebook groups and stuff like that of problems that people are having and if I've got an opportunity to address those I probably should. One of the things I want to address real quick as I'm getting into this is cleaning your brush in order to get ready to paint. Um, I've seen a lot of videos and stuff where people talk about cleaning their brush you know, out of paint and getting it ready to put back in your box. And I think people mention it sometimes, but whenever I go to clean my brush, and I think this is the brush I'm going to use, I go ahead, and this is my Dirty Mineral Spirits. This is the one I always clean the oils out in. It's also the first one that I clean paint out in. Um, but I always go to this one first, try to clean all my oils out. One little wash there, come through again. I don't know if you noticed whenever I'm going here to get the mineral spirits out I'm just kind of pinching it between my fingers I'm not pulling on the hairs or anything I'm just sitting here kind of trying to get those mineral spirits out do that a couple of times one of the other things that I like to do gently not crazy I'll take my brush and spin it a little bit not too fast if it doesn't seem to separate when I'm spinning it then I'll hold it up and let gravity help out a little bit I don't want to go crazy with it, but that gets a little bit of the air in there, gets the fumes out, gets some of the stuff out, maybe. Hopefully particles are, are getting out of there, so I've got those spirits out that had oil in them. So now I'm going to my clean mineral spirits. It's not perfectly clean because I've been using this one for a while, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to go back to my cloth, pinch between my fingers, clean again. Maybe I should put this up here closer, y'all. I'm pinching. Pinch, 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 pinch. Okay. Then when I go to spin, I'm putting it between my hands. I've seen some other sign painters and stuff do this. I actually learned this whenever I was a painting contractor. That's how we used to clean our paint brushes on the job site. And then we'd take and tap them on our foot to get the water out or whatnot, or just fling them real hard. But that gets most of it out. So this, I'm going to go ahead and paint with. Something else that I learned, when you find where the numbers are on your lettering brush, I always try to flatten my brush out with those numbers facing up so that I'm always keeping my chiseled edge on the same side and keeping those hairs trained that way. So, kind of do that with my fingers a little bit. When I go to palette it out, that'll do it a little bit more. But let's go ahead and start painting.
Okay, since I showed you guys how I clean my brush before getting started, I guess I might as well include how to clean it after I'm done with this color. And I think I'm actually done with this brush at least for a little while. And we're going to give that paint time to dry. So let's clean this brush. Alright, so here's my brush. Um, I think the camera's focusing in on that. I'm going to take it first. And, you know, actually sometimes what I like to do, and I'll show you guys this, is I'll take a brush and I'll put it on my palette. And I'll take a popsicle stick and just gently... Pushing down with that popsicle stick, I drug that through so it got some of the paint out already. So I have less to clean out in my mineral spirits is what I'm using here. Go ahead and swish that around for quite a little while there. And then I'm going to pull it out. And, you know, there's paint that's still stuck all over. Let's see if this will zoom in. There's paint that's still stuck all over the ferrule there, but I'm going to take and I'm going to clean off that ferrule, just kind of rubbing it back and forth. I'm spinning it in between my fingers, and then I'm going to pat again my bristles. Let's go back to it. Pretty vigorous here in my mineral spirits, but then gentle whenever it comes to actually patting my brush clean here. I do not want to be pulling on those brushes. If you look at my rag here that's the first time I cleaned quite a bit of paint second time it's just coming out where the ferrule is where the brush hairs go into the ferrule that's the metal part on this so I'm going to keep doing that until I really don't see it okay back here again pat 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 let's see this time there's still a little bit there I don't know if y'all can see that go back at it that paint dries up in there does a couple of things one it can pull the hairs apart where they're all kind of like sticking out instead of being together and the other thing they can do is just make it really stiff I've had a couple of brushes that that happens to sorry about the loud noise there normally I don't do this on my table I keep my cleaning bottles inside of my toolbox that I roll around with at car shows and everything and I clean down in there that way if anything splatters it's uh, not getting all over the place. Okay, I think this might be clean enough. I'm not really seeing hardly any paint at all coming out this time. So I'm going to switch over to my clean spirits. And I'll actually just turn my rag over here. Clean it out really good. You can see those hairs dancing around. Okay. looks to be pretty clean so with that said you know what one more for good measure never hurts I actually do that a lot clean that pull this aside give it a little spin again showed you all that before you can see how those hairs have all kind of come apart from doing that I'm gonna put them well actually no I'm gonna leave them apart I've started doing this recently leave them apart whenever I stick them down in my brush oil there's a lot of good brush oils out there. I know this one's Alpha 6's brush oil. I really like uh, Von Dago's brush oil. I think whenever this bottle's gone, I'm going to go back to that. I just love the way it smells. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead, like I showed you guys before, there's those numbers. I'm using that as my guide of where I am chiseling out that brush. This number 2 doesn't get a really good chisel. I don't know if y'all can tell. It comes out and then it tapers back in, but if I turn it flat, it's pretty skinny, and that's how I like to store them inside my brush box. So we're going to let the paint dry on the sign, and then we'll get back to the next color. We're going to do the letters, and I'm actually going to save this color right here because I want to do a border around the outside, and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that the last, but let's keep moving. All right, I'm going to make that next color for my letters. I think this is dried enough to where I'm not going to smudge it too bad if I accidentally bump it. I'm going to try to stay off of it. I'm actually using Ronin this time for this. I've recently started using them. kind of like them. Uh, started off as being all I could really get a hold of for a little while for white. 
show you since I'm doing tips and stuff here, I guess. Uh, stirring my paint up, obviously. But when I go to get paint out of the cup, I take my cup, I put it over the top. Let's see if y'all can see this better. Over the top of my can and bring my stick up and dribble it in. Keeps from making a mess. I'm going to need to make a bit of this color. Because i got a lot of letters to do here. Let's do maybe two more of these. One and two. Now, I haven't been perfect about that every time, so there is a little bit of paint down on the lid here, but I'm not real worried about it. It's still closing good. It's actually getting down to the last quarter of the can. Um, I don't want to use bright white on this. I want it to be light, but I don't want it to be that light. I'm going to pick out that tan that we started off with before. I'm going to put a few drops down in there. Use my same stick that I stirred that tan with before to stir this. Let's see how that looks. It's looking okay, but not dark enough yet. That's still going to be looking kind of stark white on there, and that's not what I'm going for. Actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of imitation gold. A couple drops. One, two, and let's do one more. Oop. All right, three drops of that. See what that gets us. Warms it up a little bit. It's got to be brighter than uh, my tan color was. You know, that way they stand out from each other. Good contrast, right? That's kind of a nice creamy color, but I still think it's a little too bright. Let's give it another one or two of these. One, two, and you know what I think I'm going to do? Just to dull it down a little bit. And this is going to change it really fast. I'm going to put a drop of black. I want to be stingy with it here. I don't want to go too dark too fast. All right, one drop. Stir that up and see how that looks. I don't mind if it's a little on the gray side. That might help us out here. And again, if it's too dark, I just add white to it. Let's see how that looks. That's kind of an interesting color. Oh, I think I might like that. It's white, but it's not bright white. I mean, it's not white. It's obviously gray. But in our uh, sign here, it looks kind of like white. You know what? I think we could still get away with going a little darker with it. Let's actually, this might end up making it a little on the reddish side, but I'm going to put some straight brown in here. I don't want to go grayer than that. So I'm not going to use black to darken it. That's made it a little on the red side, which is okay because it's pulling that color we got in the back. And I think I'm going to go with that. Rather than mess with it too much more and let it get away from me and have to come back and fix it, we're going to go with that, do our letters, see how they look. I will show y'all real quick. The brush that I'm using on this is MAC 169 series. This is a size 4. The one that I used on the tan there was a size 2. And I kind of wanted to make mention too, when I'm mixing my paint up, I'm mixing up in a paper cup. I get these off of Amazon. And they're wax-free paper cups. I think I order them by the thousand.
right, I'm almost done with the sign. The lettering is complete, but I want to try something I've never done before. It says Southern Grit on it, but it looks all nice and clean, and I want it to look a little bit gritty. So I'm going to do a splatter technique that I've never done with enamels before. I've done it with acrylics and watercolor and even oil paints and ink. Um, but let's see how it works with the enamels. Um, go ahead and get started with it. All right, so I am pretty pleased with how that turned out. However, I will tell you a couple of things I learned. It is not as controllable with enamels as it is with acrylics or watercolors or even ink. Um, there's a little bit of learning you need to figure out, I guess, with how to hold the brush. I was getting drips at the beginning coming off my brush because I was holding that bristles facing up, um, and it was pulling down in the handle part of the toothbrush and then dripping onto it and I'd have to clean those off so you want to do it with the bristles facing down. But take an extra piece of paper and take some time to figure it out. But let's go ahead and look and see how it turned out. Show you the final product here. Alright I'm not ending the video just yet. Not going to show you the results just yet because I had something super cool happen last night. I edited most of this video. Got a knock on my door my friend Kat came by she has a frame shop she's the one who framed my artwork like what you see in the back here she actually brought to my house delivered to me this piece that we just got framed this is a watercolor that I did at Battle in Bama this year really stoked about how that looks how it came out I also just got this one back from her Totally wanted to show these to you guys and give her a thank you on here. I don't even know if she watches these videos, but if she does, I know she'll be pleased to hear that. Big thanks to her. These look amazing. I'm actually going to end up putting these on my website, so if you guys are interested in them, they'll be up for sale here shortly. Um, other things you can find on there, t-shirts like this one, one I got on, hats, all sorts of stuff. But for now, let's go ahead and finish watching the video here see the final artwork, and hope y'all have a good time.